Hey everyone, it's Jeremy with Teletone. Uh, it was almost exactly one year ago that we released our first drum machine type instrument, which was our uh, Tempin and Percussion Orchestrator, or as you know it by its nickname, Tempo. Uh, it was based on acoustic fat dry samples with a beat maker that humanizes and bends beats. Well, today we are releasing kind of a sibling product to Tempo. This is our electronic rhythm orchestrator, or you will know it as Electro. There are some similarities between the instruments, but also quite a few differences. Uh, they both involve a beat maker and ways to, you know, bend and manipulate beats, but they have quite a bit about them that is, that is very different too. To make this instrument, we sampled some drum machines, some of the greatest drum machines of all time, uh, an 808 and 909, the Lindrum. We made some of our own samples out of a Moog DFAM and also a Juno 60. It's gonna be a lot of fun, but you probably just want to hear what it sounds like before we get too much further. So let me give you a quick demonstration. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of how the instrument sounds, at least how it sounds in that particular demo. Uh, let's do a quick overview of the instrument before we dive in deeper. There is a home page and a beat maker page. The home page is where you manipulate the sounds of the drums, and the beat maker page is where you manipulate the beat. Uh, so let's start on the home page here. Uh, you see that there are these two giant dials, the pitch wheel and the mod wheel. These are uh, these affect some of the more performative aspects of electro. And so for the pitch wheel side, these are all things that are going to work when you check them. They don't correspond to anything else. Uh, everything on the mod wheel is going to correspond to a lane in the Beatmaker page, uh, we'll, which we'll dive into in a little bit. But uh, you see here we have uh, stretch, which either speeds up or slows down the samples. The speed will switch to half or double time with the beat. Chaos, uh, you'll just have to hear it. Filter uh, activates a high or low pass filter, uh, depending on which way you turn it. Reverse introduces some kind of reversed samples. Um, when you use the pitch wheel and kind of gradually turn it down, you'll hear some reverse samples mixing in with the forward ones. Uh, velocity controls the velocities. Feel corresponds with the feel lane. Uh, when you drag the hits down, uh, it makes them a little bit late, or you can push them early. Spread affects the panning. Tune affects the tuning, and decay affects the decay. Uh, we'll get into that a lot more deeper a little bit later. Uh, next down, you'll see there are a bunch of different effects that you can use. Uh, there's saturation and distortion. You can use a combination of these when you select them. Uh, and then we have uh, these effects, the flanger, phaser, and chorus, kind of your modulation effects. These are also additive. You can com combine them, uh, stack those effects if you want to. Uh, here is a filter. If you just want to affect the filter for the whole instrument, uh, this is where you could do that without using your pitch wheel. Uh, the reverb, this is not additive. You would uh, be selecting one of these. And there's a few different options here. And then we have swing. And turning this up or down is going to make the beat swing. There are some options here to do a quarter note, eighth note, 16th note, or 32nd note swing. Uh, if you're not sure what to do, 16th note is probably what you're looking for by default, but mess with the other ones too. Down here in the kit selection is where you're going to select your kit. By uh, default, I think it's gonna pull up the 808 kit, but there's a whole bunch of other ones that, uh, that you can look at. Uh, I'll let you look through those yourself. 
and we'll we'll hear a bunch of them a little bit later on. Uh, song key we'll also talk about later on because that won't make a ton of sense until we get into some other aspects of the beat maker. The beat selection, uh, click inside there. These are organized by BPM. And so uh, there's quite a few beats. Uh, we, we've added even more than we had for, uh, for tempo this time around. So you'll have fun with that. Down at the bottom, these are, this is kind of the mixer slash, you know, drum details menu. Uh, if you are playing in manual mode, then it will switch these tabs for you. You can either click around or it'll auto select them if you're playing uh, the section of the keyboard where they are assigned manually, that which would actually be the red keys down here. Uh, these blue keys represent where you trigger your beats, which uh, we'll go over a little bit more on the next page. But for every one of these, uh, there are so many options and like the idea behind tempo is that we wanted to make beats and sounds that were very flexible. We found that with these drum machine samples, they are incredibly flexible and versatile. Like it's it's very easy. You can make toms into a kick. You can make your kick into a hi-hat. There's different ways to edit these. And I would strongly, strongly encourage you to dive very heavily into the drum details turning up the attack all the way, the decay halfway down, messing with the tuning, you're gonna get some really interesting sounds. Uh, we've, we've tried to showcase that in a lot of the demo beats. Uh, so always keep your eyes on the drum details whenever you're looking through some of our beats because sometimes you'll, you'll think, sounds like I'm hearing a pad. How is a pad playing in this instrument? And it'll be like a reverse cowbell with a uh, slow attack, long decay or something. So. Um, make sure to keep an eye uh, on those. You will also notice uh, if, if you were someone that bought Tempo, there's a few new things that uh, are different this time around, uh, such as the kick and snare. You can layer different sample options uh, and swap them out. Um, this, is, this is really, really fun to mess with to make custom sounds. You see on this one, we have a combination of an 808 snare with a Juno snare that I made. Lots of fun stuff in here, but I... Uh, I'm supposed to be moving quickly through this. So let's uh, take a quick glance at the beat maker page. This is where you're gonna make your beat. Uh, the way you do that is just add hits, you know, with your mouse, you can you can drag the mouse to, to fill them in. Uh, there's a play stop button if you wanna kind of listen to the beat that you're working on. And uh, if you're new to tempo and electro, uh, these up here are different measures. They're kind of variations on the same beat. And the, you can switch between them by playing legato and it, and it won't skip a beat or miss anything. So that's another way that this instrument is very performative. Uh, I usually left eight blank for a couple reasons. For one, it's kind of nice to have a blank in there in case you want to add like a stop in the middle of your beat. Uh, and another handy thing is that when, if you're wanting to edit these beats or edit, you know, your own, whatever you're working on, it's kind of nice to have a blank one to have a, a place to copy things to if you're needing to copy and paste, uh, which we'll, we'll talk about that later. But uh, that makes it kind of handy just to have an open space where you can paste something into while you're kind of messing around with whatever you're working on. And then you can paste it back in when you're done. OK, so that gives you kind of a brief overview of Electro. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into some of the, the deeper functions of the instrument and let you hear that. And for our deeper dive, let's go ahead and jump into the sound design section. And I don't know if people normally see these or not, but there's these little info icons everywhere. Uh, that will give you uh, a little bit of an idea. It's kind of like almost like an abbreviated version of the manual that if you're confused about something, you can click on those and get a little bit of clarity about what something does or how it works. Uh, definitely look at the manual for a more uh, thorough explanation of things, but, but those can be helpful hints. So let's go ahead and load up a beat. Uh, the way that you're going to do that is through the beat selection here. Um, I've already chosen one. I'm going to do 74 Cricket. And Electro is going to follow the, the BPM of your DAW. And so the, this is a suggested BPM for you to use, 74. And I'm going to go ahead and follow my own instructions here and change my BPM to 74. Uh, 
All right, let's just hear what this beat sounds like. Okay, so that's a few different measures and variations from 74 Cricut. Okay, let's look at some of the pitch wheel functions. And again, these are things that are going to just operate on their own. You check the button and you will hear uh, and turn the, the pitch wheel and you'll start to hear a difference in the sound stretch. This is going to stretch and contract the samples. Speed, this is going to uh, either make it half time or double time. Uh, chaos, this is gonna add some chaos, like a little glitchy effect. You hear there's a little bit of different like rhythm options when you go up or down or how far you go with it. It's kind of fun to mess with. Uh, filter, this is gonna do a high or low pass filter. Uh, reverse, as I mentioned in the intro, this is going to add some reverse samples that you can mix in. And of course you can combine these. If you want to combine reverse and speed and stretch, uh, you can do that, make kind of a slow motion sound. So a lot of different combinations you can do there. All right, over here for the mod wheel, like I said, these are gonna correspond with a different lane. Velocity, this is going to affect the overall velocities of the instrument feel. Uh, there is a lane for this. And so when you check feel here, if you drag them down, it's going to uh, make those notes uh, late. You can hear how it's kind of swinging now. Uh, you could, you know, straighten those out by moving the mod wheel. Uh, but it's not just for swing. If you just want to basically, you know, make one element kind of lag behind the others in the performance and then catch up, you can do that. I don't know how this is going to sound, but... Here, how it's kind of dragging. Um, now it could be actually a really good time to also mention that you can copy and paste any of this feel information. If you wanted the whole beat to drag like that, you could just copy those into the feel lanes. And you see how like towards the middle of the measure, everything kind of pulls back. This is kind of an extreme example, but I uh, just wanted to give you the idea so you could straighten that out. And so this is uh, again why we're you know calling it a performative instrument. Similar thing with spread. Uh, you could take one of these. Actually, let me do it with the hi hat. And uh, up is going to go to the left. Down is going to go to the right. And so you can make these hi hats kind of pan all over the place. And these will work, you can draw them in. You don't have to have the button checked, but you do have to have it checked to start manipulating that function. So now we'll unsolo this. Okay, so that's spread. Uh, here is tune. Oh, we'll use the hi-hats once again. And same thing, this is gonna correspond with this button. So you can hear that pitch changing.
Okay, so that's tune. Uh, decay, this is gonna be one that I hope you get quite a bit of use out of because decay, uh, putting it in a lane we've found um, has, has been a nice way to really add like more groove to something. We have a lot of like long sustaining subby kicks and taking some of them and reducing the decay is a really fun way to uh, completely change the groove just by affecting the decay of the kick drum. Let me show you an example. Okay, for the example, I'm gonna load up 102 Fun with Decay, trying to give you some hints as to what's going on with these beats. Uh, and I've also switched my DAW to 102. So we're gonna leave that decay lane open and you can hear uh, what we've done with the decay on all the different measures here. So I hope you take full advantage of that lane because there's really uh, a lot of interesting things you can do with the groove if you if you start messing with that, especially uh, on the kick drum. And before we move on down to the kit selection, song key beat selection, uh, it's probably be a good time to also show you how swing works. I mean, it, it, there's not much to it. it uh, you pick what you are wanting to swing, then turn it up. I'll just let you hear it a little bit. And it can swing pretty hard too. Um, and we are on the 16th note swing, uh, in case you wanted to know. All right, let's go ahead and move on down to the kit selection and beat selection. I kind of want to talk about these together in a way because we've kind of been just blown away at how much the beat can change with just uh, changing the kit selection because more so than maybe uh, uh, with acoustic drums, with these electronic drums, it changes kind of everything about the way that the beat sounds depending on what you choose. Uh, so I kind of want to showcase that a little bit for a minute. And, and uh, for now, we'll just stick with the beat we have loaded, which is 102 Fun with Decay. And uh, let's hear a few different kits and, and just hear how much this changes. So our little Casio kit. See, it, like every time we switch the, the drum kit, it feels like a, a completely different song. Do take advantage of that. Whenever you, you find a, a beat that you like, um, don't be afraid to, to flip through some of the kits. You, you may end up with a completely different uh, sound that you never would have thought of before. Okay, so as you can see, all of our beats are kind of tied to a kit and a, and a sound design scheme as you load them. Uh, a lot of these things can be locked if you like how you've done your sound design for your beat or you like how we did our sound design on a particular beat. You can always lock that. Um, you could also, once you have a kit that you like, you can lock the kit and switch the beat. And I won't spend too much time talking about each individual kit, but I do want to talk about just a couple of things uh, in the factory kits. So this is our 808 kit. Uh, we, we sampled our own 808. I actually have it sitting right here. Uh, if you've never owned one or rented one or played with one, it they are so much fun. Honestly, it's it's funny with all the bright colors and plastic tabs, it almost feels like a toy. It's kind of lightweight compared to like the Lindrum, which feels like it weighs like 30 pounds. Um, it's a lot of fun to mess with. And I think it's worth mentioning that if you've only heard 808 samples through, you know, 
uh, through Splice or, or other other places, the 808 has kind of just become this generic term that almost has no meaning at this point. But an 808 is an actual drum machine with actual sounds, even though you know people just call any subby kick, they call that an 808. It, it's almost like people have decided that 808 means bass more than it means kick drum. But on the original machine, it was supposed to be a kick drum. And we, uh, we sampled ours in several different ways. We actually sampled the 808 and 909 uh, with uh, eight round robins because these sounds are internally generated and every round robin that you record is gonna be slightly different than the other one. We recorded the accents. You can access those by just pushing anything all the way up in the, in the beat maker. That will give you an accent. And for the 808, 909, and uh, Lindrum, we actually recorded a bunch of different iterations of each sample. Uh, for example, on the kick drum, the way it loads, it has no markings by it. This is run through my Shadow Hills preamp on the iron setting, and uh, it sounds like this. When you lay into it, you can hear that accent. Uh, we also record it through the discrete setting. This is a very subtle difference, but I think it's interesting. And then there's some different hardware processing that we did. We um, actually ran some of these through uh, cassette tape. This is broken cassette. There's also a cassette overdriven. We really push the input on this uh, old Tascam tape machine that we have. Um, there's also uh, a, this, this one is where we clipped the, the preamp on the Shadow Hills. Then there is a one inch and two inch tape iteration of this. Uh, let's hear a few of the 909 as well on the kick drum. Here's through the iron transformer. Uh, one inch tape, two inch tape. Here is clipping the transformer, discrete preamp. Uh, let's hear the cassette overdriven. Pretty cool. Um, we did not record all these different iterations for the DFAM and Juno, partially because this list would be a little bit overwhelming if each one of these also had eight variations on it. And so we made all of the variations in the machine uh, themselves. So there is quite a bit of variety here. I'll just show you a few of the DFAM. Just showing you a very different side of like what you can make with Electro. One that I used constantly when I was making beats is this DFAM sub. Uh, I'm sure that sounds amazing on your phone. Uh, there's, this one has a little more noise added to it. Th this one I use quite a bit too. Let's hear... Let's go ahead and hear some of the Juno. Uh, the reason we, we did the DFAM and the Juno as well, we started off thinking we were just going to do drum machines and we thought it would add so much to this instrument if, uh, if we added the option to use drums that were made from a synthesizer, a, vi a vintage synthesizer, and also like a modular drum machine. We thought that would just add quite a bit. And so we ended up sampling the DFAM and the Juno. Um, let's hear a few of the Juno now. There's a long sub in here of the Juno that I use quite a bit too. Sometimes I'd boost the attack and let this act like a, a side chain. Uh, the Lindrum. This one does have the different iterations. Uh, here's the cassette version. Uh, one inch tape, two inch tape. Uh, and I think for the sake of time, we need to leave it at that and hop over to the snare. I'm not gonna go through all these tabs, but maybe just the kick snare and a little bit of hi-hat. I just wanna give you just an idea of the range of the sounds. It, it covers a really, really broad spectrum. So this is gonna be the 808 through the iron transformer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn snappy up. And then one inch tape, two inch tape. 
heavy saturation. This one has a cassette sped up option, which is kind of fun. Uh, that old Tascam machine just has a speed control and we just turn that up. Uh, let's hear a little bit of the 909. That's through the iron transformer. Here's discrete. And then heavy saturation. Uh, let's do a little bit of the DFAM stuff now. And I'm gonna turn these back down because I just want you to hear how these load neutrally. Let's hear a little bit of the Juno. There's a super fat one that's fun. We can get a lot of really great synth wave sounds from this uh, this Juno, these Juno snares. And then let's hear a, bit, a little bit of the Lindrum too. It's a one inch tape. Let's hear heavy saturation. Really, really cool. Uh, and then briefly, just a few of the, the hi-hats. Here's the 808. Here's the different tape options, heavy saturation. Uh, and then the DFAM has some really interesting stuff in here. So you're going to use the decay. I hope you use the decay lane a lot on some of this DFAM stuff because it, you can make some really interesting things happen when you go through that lane and, and change the rhythm by changing the decay. And then uh, let's just hear a little bit of Juno. And then here's the Lindrum. Uh, let's hear the heavy saturation. Cassette. Here's like a boosted, more like a smiley face EQ. So I didn't want to go through too many. I just wanted to give you an idea of the vast range of sounds that you can make with electro. It really covers such a broad spectrum. I wish I could go through all of them. Maybe eventually we'll make a video where we go through more of the kits, more of the samples, but uh, we really need to keep moving for now. Let's load up something a little more basic for a minute. Uh, so this 120 Electro Beat loads up with something very similar to just our 808 kit with, with a couple of differences. For one, uh, there are two kick drums kind of layered in here. I layered this DFAM sub that has a bit of noise in it into the kick drum. I'm gonna solo the kick drum by double clicking it. And let's hear this for a second. So I'm gonna uh, blend all the way over to the 808 for a second. We have a little bit of effects on here already. You can see that uh, we have distress turned up a little bit, have a little bit of distortion. I don't think there's any of these, if any modulation effects on this one. A little bit of filter happening. And then as we go over to this side, we get more of the DFAM sub noise kick drum. And then over on the snare, it's a similar thing. We have an 808 snare kind of blended with a uh, Juno snare that I made. But if you wanted, uh, if you wanted to just hear this beat with a pure 808 kit, uh, you could go in here under factory kits and load up this first one, 808. And now you'll see that there's nothing on this other tab. Um, I say it's a pure 808 kit with a couple exceptions. Um, there is no crash for an 808. They have a ride, but not a crash. So we've subbed in a different one rather than just leaving that blank. Uh, in the percussion, there's the 808 clap, clave, maracas, Uh, if we wanted to hear that with a, a straight 909 kit, we could do that. 
And as you can hear, the percussion is going to change with it. Uh, not all of the percussion that loads with the kit is going to be ideal for the beat that you made, like in this example. This measure is a little bit better. And then if you, yeah, like I said, if you wanted to lock that kit, lock the sound design, if you had added something, then you could always flip through the beats. Similarly, if you did not like what was happening with the sound design, there's a way to reset that in the cog menu. And that would be reset sound design. Now it's gonna be back to the defaults. If you want to restore the beat to the original settings that that had, uh, then you would just click away from it and come back to it and it's gonna load as intended. So if you if you start messing with one and you don't like where you ended up and you don't remember where you were, uh, you can just flip away and come back to it and uh, it'll, it'll still be there. And in case it wasn't obvious, uh, if you want to load up a kit and then swap out any one of the samples for another sample, there's actually a bunch of ways you can do that. We've just tried to make it whatever, you're gonna develop your own workflow. I've developed my workflow, how I you know change things, but uh, for the kick and snare on these tabs, you can click on them to kind of open a uh, browser window. So if you're like, I just wanna see all the 808s or 909s, then you can do that by clicking there. You can also do it by clicking here on this browser window. This is another place that gets you to the same location. Or if you want to just see all of your options all at once, then you can click here. For some reason, with I just got into the workflow of using this, just looking at everything all together, but you may wanna narrow it down more than that. So that'll be the same for the snare. You can click uh, on one of the tabs. Same thing with this tab over here. Uh, you could load up none if you don't want a sample loaded over here. And then the rest of these will just have the two options of clicking here in this menu, in this menu window, menu window. Uh, and then the browser window opens up right here. Over on to the percussion tabs. Uh, all of these are gonna have the same options, but we made three lanes in case, you know, in case you're using a conga or something, you want a low and a high and then a tambourine or something else, you can do that. Uh, the toms are actually, in tempo, we had high toms and low toms, but with these being electronic instruments, these are gonna load up the same options for both of them, and then you can choose which one's high, mid, or low. And while we're on the topic of kits, uh, you can make your own kit. You just click through these, select whatever samples you would like to use, and then go up to the utility menu and click Save Kit As. This is called My Kit. You're welcome to use that name if you want. My Kit. And then now, when we go into Kit Selection, go to User Kits, there is mykit.nka, and it'll load just as you saved it. So as we're moving into getting a deeper dive of the drum detail section, uh, I'm gonna let you hear a lot more beats because that'd be a good way to keep an eye on how I was kind of using these controls and maybe give you a few ideas of how you might wanna use them. So you will hear a bunch more beats uh, as we move into the drum detail section. One of the things we had to figure out early on with this instrument was how do we make these drum machines all kind of live in the same interface when some of these controls do different things on different drum machines? Like the tone knob on the kick does something different than the snare. And on the snare, the snappy knob does different things on the 808 than the 909. And how much do we want this thing to change as you're flipping through you know, different samples? And we've decided to follow the functionality of the original machines but without having the interface completely change where certain knobs just disappear and reappear, uh, that'll make a little more sense in a minute. But let's just start with talking about the, the tone knob on the 808 kick. So on the original 808 machine, the tone knob uh, doesn't do exactly what you would guess if you've never used the machine before. Turning it up increases the kind of a clicky attack sound and then turning it down gets rid of that clicky attack and it's more muted. This is what we based the rest of our kick drums on, like the, the ones that we made from the, the DFAM or the Juno. We've decided to follow the 808 since that is kind of one of the core sounds that we're, we're uh, making in this instrument. So for 
not for the 909, but for uh, all of the DFAM stuff and the Lindrum stuff, uh, that on the kick drum only, that's going to follow the 808 and create a more, uh, more aggressive attack as you turn it clockwise and a more subtle sloped response when you turn it counterclockwise. On the 909, and I'm not going to go through all these, but these are kind of important. On the 909, the tone knob does something completely different. And that is, uh, for the kick drum on the 909, the tone knob introduces this, this triangle wave pitch envelope thing that happens. Uh, with it all the way down, you can hear the, the, the kick drum normal. And then as you turn this up, you're going to hear this pitch envelope triangle wave sound introduced. And that will only be that way for the, the 909. Uh, we're, it, there is no other kick drum in here that's going to function that way with the tone knob. I'm not going to do all of them, but let's just go ahead and look at DFAM sub real quick to show you how the tone knob works on most of the rest of these kick drums. So turning it up is going to increase the attack sound. And then turning it down, it's going to be a lot less attack. And so once again, yeah, that follows the functionality of the 808. Snare drum. So turning up the tone, well, actually, I'm going to turn down snappy all the way so you can hear this. The 808 snare kind of has two different uh, tones happening when you turn the tone knob. You hear these two different octaves of these little, almost like a tom sound. That's what tone knob does. And then snappy increases the amount of white noise snare sound that's introduced. And then you can mess with the decay to get more of like that really quick, short 808 sound. This is very different than how the 909 uh, snare drum works. Let's go ahead and load that up. So as you can hear for the 909, this tone knob kind of increases or decreases the length of that snappy sound. And then turning the snappy all the way down decreases the volume of that sound. So that is the 909 only. And for the rest of these, the, the including the Lindrum, the snappy sound is just going to increase the frequencies of where that bottom snare sound would usually lie. And the tone knob on the rest of these is going to act basically like the tone knob on a guitar, what you would traditionally think of as a tone knob. And that's kind of back to neutral. It would be the same thing for all the DFAM stuff. So if you, once again, if you're not familiar with the 808 909, you might be a little confused at first as to why the knobs do different things. That is because we are replicating what the original machines do. Uh, and uh, we hope you really enjoy that. Now for the rest of uh, these tabs, they are going to be basically universal. So for the 808 hi-hat, uh, that's going to act like the, the tone knob in a more traditional sense. Same with the the tone on the on the toms and the ride crash everything else this is going to basically behave a as you would expect the kick and snare are the main ones that you uh, are, are kind of going to change with the samples as you can see there is an output option if you would like for any one of these elements to uh, bypass your effects uh, and some of these effects up here too you can select a different output there's also an effects bypass if you just want to bypass the effects but don't want to send them out to your DAW separately. Uh, you can click that. This actually really comes in handy. Uh, don't ig ignore this because this can be really interesting. If you want to, say you have, uh, if, you, if you want to load up two 808 kick drums and you wanted one of them to be completely squashed, you could crank up the distress. This one's going to be completely leveled out and it's going to increase that sustain. Uh, and then you want to take this other one and bypass that. You don't want it to get squished 
And so you could, you know, uh, either increase the volume or increase the low end and then uh, blend the two. And now you don't have to worry too much about you losing all of your low end from the effects. That's a really effective tool. It's a, it's a really useful tool. And I would encourage you to use that. Uh, definitely play around, uh, around with the, the, the layering for the kick and snare. It, it's, it's a really special function. And as we get into the beats, you'll hear kind of how we've utilized that. Let's go ahead and talk about song key, which I've been putting off. You'll see there's a drop down menu here. You can set it to major, minor, chromatic. I usually just leave it at chromatic. Um, it can be useful if you don't know anything at, at all about music theory, then, and, and you just want to know that I'm in the key of C and I don't want to accidentally hit a wrong note, you can set that to major or minor and it'll kind of keep you from making mistakes uh, with what we're calling, I don't, it, internally we called this uh, uh, the pitch strip. I guess we never you know, we never came up with a better name for it. So I guess that's what it's called now, the pitch strip. Uh, this talks to the song key. So if you set this to major, then it's only gonna give you the notes of that scale for your kick drum. And if you set it to minor, it'll uh, lock it into minor, chromatic, it'll move chromatically. If you hold option and drag up or down, then it will change all of them together. But something, I don't know if people know this or not, but something you should realize about the original 808 machine is that the kick drum, like the knobs on here, you have level, tone, and decay. There was no uh, tuning button to, to play bass lines with it. It was just locked into the same frequency. This gives you so much flexibility, the fact that you're able to create a chord progression right here. You could also theoretically use the tune lane because all of these have a tune lane, but on the kick drum specifically, we thought it would be really handy just to have it right there on the beat maker where you can switch any of these to whatever notes you wanted. And while we're on this subject, this would be a good time uh, to mention that there is also a tune knob. This is a fine tune knob on the front here. This is gonna be really important because uh, with the 808 specifically, there is a pitch envelope happening with the kick drum. What that means is that when you trigger the note, there is a little bit of a pitch and it drops. Now, depending on how you have your decay set up and how you have like distress or like compression set up, you might hear different notes. The attack is gonna be one note and the sustain is gonna be a slightly lower note. So it is up to you to uh, figure out, you know, which part of that note that you're using and then tune it accordingly. Uh, so if you're, if you're messing with something that has a really short decay, you're gonna hear a little bit of uh, a note that is a half step up for then, it, if you had the distress cranked up, um, let me just show you an example. You hear how it kind of sinks in the pitch. If you had this decay turned down, you'd mainly be hearing the attack and it would sound like a different note. So use this fine tune knob on the front if you if you want to really dial in like exactly where that pitch is supposed to sit. I would also go ahead and mention that with these pitch strips, it will modulate for you with the song key. Uh, if you look at this pattern, let's just say we were doing something like this, and then we decide that we want to switch the key, we want to go up a whole step. If you switch this now to A, uh, all of these pitches have moved. So that'll save you a little bit of time. Note that anything else that uses the uh, tune lane will not be affected. So if you had used the tune lane to make a cowbell into some kind of pad, then you would need to, to go to that one and then uh, adjust the tune your, yourself right there.
it'd probably be easier than going into the, the tune lane itself and trying to adjust it there. So I would use the, the tune and the drum details. All right, let's listen to some beats now. Um, let me try and find some that'll kind of highlight some of the stuff we've been talking about. All right, let's let up this beat 101 Mid Conga Outshined, a name that probably means very little to you. But basically, it's this beat where there's this mid conga line happening, and then this bigger saturated conga comes in later and kind of steals the spotlight. So this is a good example of showing you how anything, almost anything can be almost anything else. So this low conga, I'm using the heavy saturation uh, Lin drum iteration of it, almost sounds like a, a funny little like bass patch that you hear. And that's from using the tune lane here. A little bit of decay here to kind of affect like how uh, how short the note is, and then uh, I also have the decay turn or sorry the attack turned down on this one as well. So just one example of how. Uh, you can take one thing that's supposed to sound one way and completely transform it into something completely different. This also shows an example of how I've used a non-kick element to make a kick sound. I believe I'm using one of these toms as a kick drum. It's kind of like a double. There's the kick lane and there's the tom lane, and I have them doing the same thing here. and then played together, here's how they sound. And by the way, clicking on any lane is gonna solo it, and then if you hold down shift, it's gonna to add to that, in case you were curious how I did that. And then you could hear another example of how we're using decay uh, in here too affect the sound of these two bass drums. Okay, let me show you another beat. This one, two, three kick sidechains kick is exactly what it sounds like. There is uh, a 909 kick that appears to be sidechaining this DFAM synthetic or subby kick. And so as you can see on this one, the attack is pushed almost all the way up, which gives it a very slow fade in. The effects are bypassed, and I've even turned up the low end a little bit, uh, as this is faded mostly to the 909 side. So that's kind of like another built-in tip and trick that I would say is, uh, yeah, taking two kicks, layering them together, bypassing the effects on one, turning the attack all the way up and making a side chain out of it. Really fun to do that. All right, this is a beat that I used in the trailer, 120 Recluse, because Recluse is the name of a, uh, a Scarbo patch I was using as one of the, the only other instruments in that trailer. It's basically electro, and then Scarbo, like one or two sounds, and that is it. Uh, well, and a, and a vocal sample. So this is a great example of another way that you can use uh, percussive elements for, for non-percussive things. In this one, I ended up using uh, this high tabla for uh, a pad. And the way it goes in the trailer kind of starts with this simple beat. hear a little bit of rhythm coming in with the toms. And, and you can see that that rhythm is very much affected by the decay lane here. So 
So it sounds very pad-like, turning the decay way up and then uh, also turning the reverb almost all the way up. And then the change in that chord is done in the tune lane. You can also hear that there are other elements uh, that are playing melodic lines. I believe this one might be playing off of the tom line. So we've made very melodic things happen out of these percussive elements. It's really fun. So again, this is just getting new sounds from just moving uh, knobs and the drum details. Really, really fun. All right, let's just look at one more uh, to kind of showcase some of this drum detail stuff. Uh, let's load up 122 man, uh, Machine in the Man. There's also one called Man in the Machine. Uh, this one has some fun stuff going on with the crashes a little bit uh, later in the sequence. Okay, so let's let's solo this crash. See how once again we're using the decay lane to to make rhythm. The decay is a really good way of, of doing that, even if it's on a crash symbol. And I don't see anything in the feel, which must mean that we are using swing on this one, which yes we are. So we're using a crash that doesn't really sound like a crash. Tom sounds like a tom. A tom that sounds like a laser kind of like sound effect, little synthy sound. And then we have two layers of kicks going on. One that is more attacky, one that's more subby. And it looks like on the uh, longer subby one, we have the attack turned way down. If you can't tell, I am really trying to encourage you to mess with these knobs, mess with these sounds. You will get so much more out of the instrument if you kind of treat these as just a starting place and not the end point. Okay, I want to hop over to the Beatmaker page now and dive in a little bit deeper on how to make and manipulate beats. And I want to load up, uh, at least to start with, this beat that utilizes the Lindrum sounds because we haven't really touched on that yet. Roger Lin himself was extremely gracious uh, to give us permission to sample the Lin drum. It's it's such a cool sound, such an iconic sound. If you don't if you don't think you know the sound, you actually do. You just didn't know that's what you were hearing. Um, these are all uh, single one shots. There are no round robins on these because that's how the machine is. But that is how you get the uh, the this very specific sound. Uh, let me just play this beat and you'll hear what I'm talking about. And this is one where I'm kind of making a, a fake delay out of using the velocities here, but uh, this is the sound of the Lindrum. Very iconic. Uh, Prince used this on a lot of on a lot of different things. Stevie Wonder did as well. But it, but rather than calling out specific artists that use it, I think basically everyone was using this for a period of time. Very very cool. And, and we're we're just really really thankful to Roger Lynn for giving us permission to to sample it. Very very cool. So as I mentioned earlier, there's a play button. If you're working on a beat and you want to just let it play while you're working, you can. And I also wanted to mention the Lindrum because uh, the Lindrum is the one drum where the, the pitch strips have no effect on it. Uh, the reason we did this, because you might think, well, it, it wouldn't hurt to let the, the Lindrum pitches change, but uh, in the event that you wanted to use the Lindrum 
as kind of a, an acoustic attacky sample and something underneath it, uh, you probably wouldn't want the pitch of the the real sounding drum to be jumping in pitch all over the map while your sub is is changing. So the Lin drum is exempt from these. You can move them around, but they won't do anything if the Lin drum is the only sound that is pulled up. So you just write in your hits here. Uh, if you hold down Option and drag, I think we meant or Shift and drag. Sorry, uh, it'll move everything together. Uh, in case you just want everything to move like at the uh, at the same proportions. We showed you earlier how you can uh, affect the tuning and spread of different things. I usually end up using the hi-hat as a demonstration because it's usually the busiest thing that's going on. And so this would be able to be manipulated with the uh, with the, the mod wheel if you had these buttons checked for the tune and spread. Uh, and then if you turn it all the way, turn the module all the way down and uncheck it, it'll reset it for you. You can change the number of steps by uh, dragging this wheel right here. You can change the number of sub steps by dragging up and down here. And then if you want to change the sub steps of the entire lane, then you just hold down option and drag up and then those will all move together. This is also where you would affect the hi-hat articulations. And as you change these dots here, it's going to affect the decay. Now, this is a little bit different than the decay lane because for some of these drum machines, it's actually going to be a different sample itself. So this uh, open sample is not just something with the de decay increased. It's a different sample. As you can hear. You can copy and paste lanes to each other. Obviously, it's not going to copy and paste the hi-hat articulations into a different drum. You can copy any of these things, as we mentioned earlier. Makes it really handy. You can copy entire measures to other measures. That is through the utility menu. You would hit copy measure, and then you could paste that wherever you want it. You can reset lanes by using the reset uh, button right here. There are some presets here that are just kind of shortcuts. I use this a lot for hi-hats because a lot of times I end up doing 16th notes. You can randomize the hits on any of these and make a random pattern. Okay, so that's a little bit about how you make beats. It's, it's fairly simple. You're just gonna be clicking in here uh, to add hits. But how do you actually perform something in Electro? Well, you're going to record any of these measures, starting with middle C, these are all gonna play different measures. If you play legato, they're gonna to connect to each other. And then you're gonna record it just like you would record any other uh, virtual instrument, which I'm gonna go ahead and do right now. I didn't play that great, and I'm kind of glad that I didn't because it's a good chance to show something. If you were listening closely, you would hear a little bit of a weird stutter step at the beginning. Uh, that is the input quantize working. And so if you are late on something, it will catch you up. If you're too early on something, it will slightly hesitate and wait to kind of lock that in. Uh, and then afterwards, you can always quantize your MIDI if you want to. But as you can see, I was late on this note. And so we'll go ahead and quantize all of these. And then after quantizing, you'll hear it play it back uh, perfectly in time. All right, just for the sake of variety, uh, let's hear a little bit of another beat. And I'm gonna go ahead and record some pitch wheel stuff with it. Um, I do the mod wheel too, but I don't know if I'm coordinated enough to like nail it in one take. So we'll just do uh, one wheel at a time for now. It's 
kind of a little bit of fun with the, the pitch wheel. Um, you could always switch these radio buttons after you've recorded it and just see what other combinations you can come up with and uh, figure out which one you like the best. And before I forget, I want to talk about another feature of the Beatmaker mode that's kind of tucked away in the utility menu. Uh, and that is the drum machine mode. Let me initialize this and just reset everything back to the beginning. If you are wanting to make a beat that it cl more closely resembles like a drum machine mode, you can go into what is called drum machine mode. And now there are like all of the steps that you do uh, will fill up the square all the way. So these are, um, so no more velocities in the steps. It will just fill them up all the way. And in case you want something that sounds just a little bit more mechanical, uh, that's kind of a, a nice hidden function. When you click on the steps, they'll go away. But this will just make everything sound a lot more uh, mechanical. So that's just a little fun little feature we added on. And to take it off drum machine mode, just click it again. Let's go ahead and initialize this again. That's going to reset everything back to basically zero, no effects, no nothing else. It's going to load an 808 kit. And uh, let's talk about manual mode for a minute. I think I mentioned it early on that all of these red keys down here are going to be where uh, you can perform in manual mode. And uh, you've had to, you've likely had to suffer through my finger drumming before in the tempo videos. I am not going to spend much time on it because I don't want to embarrass myself. But it's important to note that you can play a beat in manual mode and then you can drag it into the beat maker and it will load all of the nuance of that performance, including like if you were late on things, it's going to maintain that humanized feel. You can also get rid of that easily through uh, checking the feel button and turning the module all the way down. That'll get rid of it, but uh, it will import your beat humanized. Let me show you an example. I'm gonna play something very simple. Okay, so there is a lazy sounding beat and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that it's exactly one measure and then just drag it into the beat maker. And here's my beat. in all of its uh, humanized glory. If you look at feel, you're gonna see how I was uh, a little bit late on everything. Surprisingly, I usually am early on everything. But anyway, if you want to straighten that out, then just check feel. And that's how you do that. Um, you can also take any one of these beats and drag the MIDI information into your timeline in case you want to uh, move things around or edit. If that's your workflow that you edit things kind of manually in MIDI, you can do that. It's going to maintain the feel information from the feel lane. Um, it will also take the swing information with it. If you have a beat, let me hear what this one is. Well, this one's using feel. Uh, I can tell because swing is turned all the way down. This one's using feel to create that groove and that will drag with it into your timeline. Just uh, hover over this MIDI icon and then drag it into your timeline and let's listen. And then you can just duplicate that to make a loop or you can, or you can drag some of these other sequences out. Uh, one thing I want to note is that I use Cubase for this demonstration because Cubase is super simple. It just lets you drag and drop, uh, which is really nice. But if you're using uh, Ableton, Pro Tools, FL Studio, you may have to export your MIDI first and then import it into the Beatmaker. That uh, is just a function of your DAW and uh, they're all made a little bit differently. One other thing I want to mention is that in order to make feel work, where we want to maintain your humanized, the feel of the beat that you're manually playing, we needed to kind of make a rhythmic cutoff somewhere where if you were doing like a fast 
64th note pattern and you wanted to drag that in, it will only interpret things up to a 16th note. And that is the only way we could make it work with maintaining the feel. Because especially if you're at any BPM over 100, there's just no way for it to read your mind and know if you meant to be a 64th note late or if you were just adding a little bit of like humanization to that beat. So it will read up to 16th notes and it will delegate any timing issues to feel. And then if you want to get rid of those, like I said, check feel, pull the mod wheel all the way down and it will be quantized. I guess we probably shouldn't go without talking about uh, alternate time signatures. This will read the time signature of your DAW. And I think I have a beat that is in 5.4. It's called 96 in 5.4. And let's change our DAW to be 96 and 5.4. You can also name this beat or what, you know, what we were basing this beat off of if you know it. Say it out loud if you know it. So it's a little fun beat and uh, I'm calling it 5-4. That's kind of like an online debate of uh, what to call this if we're calling it 5-4, five, 5-8. Five, um, anyway, yes, multiple time signatures. Whatever you set your DAW to, uh, this will sync up with it. Okay, I think that's gonna do it for our walkthrough of Electro. We're really excited for you guys to get your hands on this. We had so much fun making it. We think it's a really fun instrument. It's a lot more complex than things we used to make, but I still feel that it is an instrument that you are able to load it up, hit middle C, start playing a beat, and instantly start having fun with it without knowing anything else about the instrument. You could just hit a note, start playing beats, start switching between sequences, and you are off to the races, basically. Um, follow us on Instagram, uh, Teletone Audio. Uh, sign up for our email list at teletoneaudio.com. That's where we always send you uh, updates, discounts. Um, our loyalty discounts always come through the email list, so make sure you're signed up for that. Thank you so much for supporting us and allowing us to, to make instruments like this. It's, it's such a pleasure, such an honor. Uh, we're really, really excited to hear what you make with it.